Texas drops to one and two on the season after losing to Ole Miss here at home, 44-23. Dave Bear here with Cedric Golden. We're here at Texas Memorial Stadium and said, let's just jump right into it. What are your thoughts from this moment? Uh, I'm thinking Meg Brown's running out of answers because uh, the Texas Longhorns are not a good football team. They're not good on offense. They're not good on defense. And then today, special teams rid its ugly head, giving up a long touchdown on a punt return. They pretty much took them out of the game. Uh, it, it's critical mass for the Longhorns, and the meat of the schedule is just starting. So at one and two, uh, they're going to struggle to win six or seven games this season. Said the defense is getting the headlines. Manny Diaz obviously getting fired last Sunday, but I mean the offense has its issues too. Even though obviously Case McCoy played today, still the play calling. Uh, Jonathan Gray not in the game a lot in the fourth quarter. There are a lot of yeah, question marks he? on offense. Big question marks on offense. Wondering why Joe Bergeron was in there at winning time when you needed a big play guy. And if there's a big play guy in this running running back trio, it would be Jonathan Gray who was over on the sideline unbeknownst to us. I, I just run, wonder if if it's just gotten to the point where let's call it what it is. It's a really bad football team that's not going to get fixed. The Big 12 is not a great conference, but I can tell you off the top of my head that the Oklahoma Sooners the ba and the Baylor Bears are better football teams in Texas, and they're going to struggle to beat K-State having lost five straight games to Bill Snyder uh, slash Ron Prince. Mac talks about consistency being a problem, but uh, I'm starting to wonder maybe it's not a problem. Maybe this team is just consistently bad because it is bad. I was going to say the only thing that's consistent about this team is that it's inconsistent. They don't they don't have a real plan offensively. I know David Ash was out and Case McCoy came in and completed 14 of his first 16 passes. Mm -hmm. But once um, the Ole Miss Rebels ramped up the the uh, defensive pressure, the running game went away and they didn't have time to pass another poor game by the offensive line. Uh, I know Mac has protected them in the past, but they have not been a very solid unit through three games. This is going to get worse before it gets better, in my opinion. Texas playing on this field again next weekend. They're bringing in Kansas State, a team they've historically struggled against at least over the last decade or so. If it's going to get worse before it gets better, is that a big L coming up, or do you think they somehow figure out a way to turn things around there? Well, I'm stupid. I think they actually have a chance to beat Kansas <laughs> State, but I, I thought they had a chance to beat Ole Miss. So uh, all I know is every time I look up, they're giving up 40-plus points and, and, and not scoring more than two or three touchdowns in a game. So. Uh, I think they'll be a fa be favored going into the game, but if but if the problems that have, we've seen in the last couple of weeks persist, they will surely lose to K State as well. Lots of questions, really not a whole lot of answers here on the 40 Acres right now as this Longhorn team drops to one and two, and the outlook for the future not so bright. Come back to Statesman.com later in the week. We'll be there on Monday for Mac Brown's press conference, and said along with Kirk Bowles, we'll have loads of coverage leading up to Saturday's game against Kansas State. We'll see you.